People often ask me, Lions, what is your favorite video game of all time? And for the most part, I always give a generic answer of, oh, I don't actually have one singular favorite game. Instead, I have a huge pile of games that I adore and can yap about for hours. Of course, this pile includes a lot of Nintendo titles, such as Pokemon Black 2 White 2, Heart Gold Soul Silver, Mario Galaxy, Breath of the Wild, and Madden 11 for the Wii. But then I'm also able to pull out games like like Modern Warfare for the Xbox 360. I know it's a bit of a contrast from the style of game I normally talk about, but Call of Duty has been one of, if not the most impactful franchises in my life, and although I don't play these games as much nowadays, I still hold this series up there as one of my favorites. This is a little bit of lore for those of you new to the Lion Cinematic Universe, but I wasn't originally a Nintendo YouTuber. For a matter of fact, I started my social media degeneracy as a Call of Duty YouTuber back in 2014 when I was 11 years old. I used to go by the name Ian Lizard Gaming, and I would spend all day making videos like 1v1 quickscoping challenge and epic trickshotting montage. If you couldn't tell, my content was heavily inspired by the original FaZe Clan, but the catch with my videos was I would never actually hit a single trickshot, and all those quick scoping challenges were barely quick scoping challenges because me and my friends were trash at the game. Regardless of the fact that I was genuinely the worst Call of Duty YouTuber of all time, these games consumed the entirety of my life, and after a while I started to look for more ways to play these games outside of just my Xbox. It started with the mobile game Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies, which I would play on my iPod Touch every day on the school bus. If you don't remember, this was a very generic zombie killing game, and at the time, this felt like one of the most revolutionary breakthroughs in gaming history, since around the early 2010s, mobile games were not like they are today, so having anything that somewhat resembled a console game was a win in my book. My buddies and I in elementary school were addicted to this game, since it was Call of Duty on the go. But sooner rather than later, I would stumble across a hidden gem at my local Kmart. Call of Duty World at War, but for the DS. Yeah, Call of Duty and Nintendo consoles have a bit of a forbidden relationship that many people look down upon, since people say, how can a Call of Duty game be good on a Nintendo console? But in reality... Uh, you're right, these games aren't that good, but they're quirky. So today I want to talk about the weird history that I have with these games, since for some reason, I bought a bunch of them as a kid. D don't know why. To truly understand the story of Call of Duty on Nintendo consoles, we first have to go all the way back to E3 2007 when Activision waltzed their way onto the stage and announced that their brand new game, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, would be getting a release for the popular little handheld console, the Nintendo DS. Releasing this game on the DS was kind of a no-brainer on Activision's part since Call of Duty was reaching massive levels levels of popularity, and the DS at that point was the best-selling gaming console in the United States, with over 8.5 million units sold. So clearly, a popular game plus a global phenomenon console should make passionate love and produce this. Y yeah, the game kind of looks like ass. Obviously, we can't expect much from the Nintendo DS's whopping 4 megabytes of RAM, so with that in mind, this game does gain some bonus points, since it's kind of impressive they put Call of Duty 4 on a DS in the first place, but also at the same time, it kind of looks like one of those games you would play on crazygames.com when you had spare time on the school library computer. Now, to many people's surprise, including Baby Lions, this game was actually jam-packed with content, which is not something you would normally expect with a console game being ported to a handheld, since for the most part, these variations always cut corners. We saw it all the time when a game would get announced for both home consoles and the DS, we would get super hyped since oh my god, I can play this game, but on the go, but when you actually buy the DS version of these games, you realize, wait a second. 
These are completely different. For example, there was the Despicable Me game, which left me in complete and utter shock when I bought it on the DS, since I thought I was gonna have some crazy minion action. B but I didn't. Call of Duty 4, on the other hand, actually carried over a lot of the game modes we saw on the home console. Now, of course, these game modes were still dumbed down a tiny bit, like the campaign and missions are not entirely the same as the original, but overall, we still got a pretty solid plot in what many people thought was gonna be a pretty mediocre variation of the game. When I first bought this title from Kmart as a wee lad, I was so excited, and I did spend a couple of hours on the campaign but that was not why I bought this game in the first place, since the reason I loved Call of Duty so much was because of the multiplayer, and somehow Call of Duty 4 on the DS had multiplayer. Using DS download play and the multi-card play feature that the DS had, you could enter the world of online gaming and choose between two game modes, team deathmatch or free-for-all. This is obviously a major drop-off in the number of multiplayer game modes when comparing it to the regular version of the game, but that didn't really bother me whatsoever since team deathmatch and free-for-all were the game modes I spent all my time on anyways. My little brother and I soon became addicted to COD 4 on the DS and would play this game on every long car ride or any time we were away from the house in general. I think what made this game so special was the fact that it was literally the bare minimum Call of Duty experience. It didn't have any kill streaks or achievements that the regular games had and instead was as simple as shoot opponent and that's it. Also, I was not the only person who thought that this was a shockingly good way of adapting Call of Duty for the Nintendo DS, since many major gaming media outlets were rating this game fairly highly. So, with all of the positive reception the game received, Activision knew that they needed to keep milking the DS fanbase. The next Call of Duty game we would see released on the Nintendo DS was Call of Duty World at War, which came out in November of 2000. 2008. This game was almost entirely similar to its predecessor, and the primary change came in the form of the engine that the game was running on. From a game mode standpoint, there was a campaign that was split into three parts where you would play as America, England, and Russia. I have to say, one reoccurring concept you'll notice about the DS versions of Call of Duty is the fact that the campaign's plot is heavily related to the console versions, but you play the game from a totally different perspective. In the console versions of the game, you are very important. Your actions and decisions help play a role in changing the outcome of the war at hand, but in the DS version, you're kind of useless. Okay, maybe useless is a strong way of putting it, but you're not particularly important and instead are just doing missions to help make minor changes. So, yeah. In addition to the campaign, we also got a multiplayer mode, which was very similar to COD 4's, but this time it included some more content, such as Capture the Flag. As for how I ended up with this game, it's nearly identical to when I bought COD 4, since Kmart always had the DS Call of Duty games on sale in those old clearance bins, so every couple of months when I got bored of the game I was playing, I would go to the bins and just shuffle around for whatever slop I was able to buy. These Kmart clearance bins are quite literally how I ended up with every single Call of Duty DS game, since I was not buying these on the day of release, because half of them came out when I was four. After World at War, we would see three more Call of Duty games released on the DS, those being Modern Warfare Mobilized, Black Ops 1, and MW3. Of these three games, the most interesting one to me has to be Modern Warfare Mobilized, because, well, what the hell is Modern Warfare mobilized? Using the process of elimination and quadratic formula, it should be easy to determine that this is just MW2 but on the DS. You could also tell that by the fact that it's literally just the MW2 cover. This is the only Call of Duty game on the DS that doesn't share the same name as its home console counterpart, and I'm not entirely sure why, since from a gameplay perspective, it's very similar to the other 
other DS games, so I don't know why they messed with the continuity of these titles. This is like the most useless thing to get mad about, but it bothers me so much for some reason, since if you're gonna carry over the names of the home console versions, do it for all the games. Don't decide in the middle of releasing all these to be quirky for no reason. Regardless of the name that annoys me way more than it should, this game is pretty similar to the previous titles I talked about, and the major change we saw was the addition of the survival game mode. As the name implies, in this game mode, the goal is to survive. Waves of enemies are coming at you, and the goal is to survive as many waves as possible. It's kind of like zombies in a way, but without the zombies. For some reason, this was my favorite mode to play when I wasn't playing multiplayer with my brother or friends. It was just really satisfying to see how far in the game I could make it without dying to the horde of enemies trying to attack me. Overall, the Call of Duty games on the DS are honestly really underrated. Now, I wouldn't say that they're worth playing nowadays, since they definitely do not hold up, but for preteen Lions who is trying to become a pro MLG Call of Duty player, this was all I could ask for. There is also that added bit of everyone's favorite buzzword, nostalgia, since the experience of going to Kmart to get these games and then playing it using local multiplayer with my brother and friends is something that I look back on a ton. Also, I always think about what could have been if we got a Call of Duty game on the 3DS, since honestly, this console was way better suited for an FPS game thanks to its circle pad. It would have been sick if we got Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified, but on the 3DS, since I remember watching YouTube videos about people playing this game on the PS Vita all the time, and it made me so jealous as someone that only owned the 3DS. Although Call of Duty's time on Nintendo handhelds ended with the DS, there were still many games in this series that were released on Nintendo hardware, specifically the Nintendo Wii. Like the DS, the Wii received five games from the Call of Duty franchise, and these titles are... Well, they are, uh, they are the video games of all time. Unlike the DS games, I actually didn't own every single Wii Call of Duty game, so I can't really speak on most of them, but I did have the honor of owning Black Ops and MW3 on this console for whatever reason. I, I really don't know why I decided to buy these games for the Wii, since I owned an Xbox 360, and I also owned these games on that Xbox 360. But hey, I, I love wasting money on random products that major corporations are selling me. I first bought Black Ops for the Wii when I was visiting a local Goodwill and found it hidden under a stack of sealed Wii Fit bundles that were for some reason accumulating at my store. I got the game for under $10, so in my brain I thought, this is a good investment since it's only $10, but in reality I would go on to play this game a whopping one time. Yup, one single time. To play this game, all you needed was a Wiimote and Nunchuck, but if you wanted to get fancy, you could buy the Wii Zapper accessory that added no real functionality other than the fact that it felt like you were holding a real weapon. All things considered, this game is basically identical to the other home console versions of Call of Duty Black Ops, and the differences come in very minor changes, such as different sound effects or texture changes. However, the most significant difference that the Wii version had to offer was the ability to use motion controls. During the late 2000s and early 2010s, every person was quivering when thinking of the possibility of using motion controls in video games. We saw PlayStation release whatever those little stick things were, and then Xbox had the Kinect. But no company did motion controls better than Nintendo with the Wii. So it should have been a no-brainer that any Call of Duty entry on the console received the motion control treatment. And these motion controls? <laughs>
They made me want to cut the blood circulation off my arms using the nunchucks wire. This is pretty well documented over my time on the internet, but I am not a fan of motion controls, and when using them in Black Ops, I felt like I was having miniature aneurysms every couple of seconds because it was so difficult to do everything. Of course, I could have just played the game without the motion controls because that was an option, but also, if I was gonna do that, I might as well have just played the game on my Xbox 360. So I told myself, if I was gonna play Black Ops but on the Wii, it had to be with the motion controls. And that was a terrible idea. For whatever reason, everyone on the Wii version of Black Ops was cracked, or maybe I was just not good at the game. I kept dying and dying, and the motion controls were not helping me at all. So only a couple hours after buying the game, I dropped it and let it run under my couch for the foreseeable future until I had to move and then I rediscovered the game and it had grown some ancient fungus on it. The next and only other Call of Duty game on the Wii that I owned was Modern Warfare 3, which is an all-time favorite game of mine on the Xbox 360, mainly because it was one of my first introductions to this franchise. My best friend owned the limited edition MW3 Xbox 360 and once my entire entire friend group saw that, we all decided to make this game our personalities for a solid two years, so when I found it pre-owned for the Wii at GameStop, I thought it would be a cool novelty item to own. I am going to emphasize the words novelty item by the way, since I really did not have any intentions of playing this version of the game, but then the voices in my head started speaking to me and said, Lions, you should really play this version of the game because you bought it it, and it would be a smart financial decision to play the game that you bought rather than displaying it on a shelf because no one cares about this version of the game so why even display it on a shelf? Also, no one loves you. After hearing my inner voices say all of that to me and then also insult me at the end for some reason, I decided to plop this game in my Wii and oh my god. It, it, it's just MW3. Yeah, just like Black Ops, MW3 on the Wii is basically identical to its counterparts on the other home consoles, with only minor changes and the addition of motion controls. In terms of my experience with the gameplay, it went pretty much identically to how my Black Ops experience went, which was, I, I could not control the Wiimote motion controls for my life. You know, maybe this is just a me problem, since I do see some people on YouTube say that the Wii motion controls for Call of Duty were ahead of their time, but at the same time, I think these people are just trying to gaslight me. Even though I personally don't like the Wii Call of Duty games, I still think that they're some of the coolest entries in this series, since they're so obscure. We don't see Nintendo get Call of Duty games anymore, so to know that there was a point in time when these games were getting released regularly on Nintendo hardware is kinda cool. My time with Call of Duty on Nintendo consoles came to an end after my DS and Wii slowly faded away into the night sky. But just because I was done with this series on these consoles did not mean that Activision wasn't going to continue making these games on Nintendo hardware, since on Nintendo's next console, the Wii U, we would see the release of Black Ops 2 and Ghosts. Fun fact, Black Ops 2 is actually my favorite Call of Duty game of all time, but I never got to play it on the Wii U because... I, I'm not even gonna say it because I've said it in every video. I did not own a Wii U growing up. Yeah, neither of the Call of Duty games on the Wii U really impacted me as a child, and looking back on them, they really did not have any super special features other than the fact that they were a Call of Duty game, but on the Wii U. If you are interested in learning more about these games, I would highly recommend you go watch a video from my friend Benny, where he actually played Call of Duty on the Wii U the day the Wii U's online servers shut down. It's a super cool video, and also Good Guy Alex is in it, so go watch it. All right, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this one, you definitely are going to enjoy this one. And also watch this video I made about Amiibo, since it flopped and I really liked making it. So please go watch it so the number can become big. Because as we all know, big number equals better 
better person. Also, go follow all of my socials. They'll be linked in the description. I'm actually streaming on Twitch way more than usual nowadays, so definitely follow me over there if you want to see me have multiple mental breakdowns, but live. Finally, make sure to press this subscribe button right here. I am very close to 60k and I would like to hit it before the new year. So please subscribe and that's all I have for you today. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching again and I will see you all eventually.